Droids, droids, and more droids. Guess what we're talking about today? Welcome back to The Journey. And if you're new, we're collecting the entire Star Wars Kenner line, starting from 1977 and ending at 1985. Yes, we did start from scratch, so if you want to go back and catch up on those episodes, please do. I've said it before and I'll say it again, I love the droid figures from Kenner. And the ones that I had when I was a kid were the C-3PO, the R2-D2 with the sensor scope version, and IG-88. And miraculously, I still have all those figures. But the only ones that made it into my display case were my C-3PO and my IG-88. I did have another IG-88, but it's missing its arm, so that's why I didn't make it into that case. Hey man, that thing was played with. So there's two things I wanna do in this episode. Number one, I wanna get to know all the droids and the ones that I still have to collect. And number two, there's something in the Kenner line that I never knew existed until I started doing research on this run. So stay tuned to find out what that is. Now, for those of you watching, here's what I want you to do. I love trivia, especially about the vintage Kenner toys. So I want you to get out your piece of paper, your pencil, and see if you can name all the droids. Don't look on the internet and don't turn your head to look at your collection. Seriously, see if you can name them all. Just talking about the toys that Kenner made. You ready? Let's go. So we gotta start at the beginning, 1977. First with R2-D2, and he was first available in the early bird Star Wars release, but had his first card release on the 12-back, and he was played by the late Kenny Baker. Next, we get to C-3PO, and his first release was on the 1977 card back, and he was famously played by Anthony Daniels, and Anthony Daniels has appeared as C-3PO in every Star Wars movie. R5-D4 had a quick scene in A New Hope, but since then has made appearances in Star Wars legend stories, and was said to be force sensitive and faked his motivator being blown out so that R2-D2 could be paired with Luke and C-3PO on their mission. He was first available on the second wave on the 20 card back. The power droid, nicknamed Gonk over the noise that he makes, he was played by actor Rusty Goff and later worked with Lucas again in Willow. He was first released on the 20 back cards on the second wave. R2-D2 from the droid playset. We just won't include R2, but the whole playset, because you can create so many droids here. Produced in 1979, a fun fact about this is that in Solo, A Star Wars Story, production designers made a nod to the playset with a vehicle in the background that you can have made in the droid playset. If you knew that, bonus points to you. The Death Star droid. The Empire had droids too, but the Death Star droid was the only one to make it into the Kenner line of toys officially called RA-7. Here is an early pencil sketch from Ralph McQuarrie. The figure was first available on the 20 back cards in the second wave of Star Wars. FX-7 Medical Droid. This was one of the droids who helped nurse Luke back to health when he survived the Wampa attack and was available on the first wave of the Empire Strikes Back cards on the 31 backs. IG-88, one of the bounty hunters. In Star Wars Legends, he tried to download himself into the Death Star 2 to essentially have that be his body. His goal was to rule the universe. At least he had goals. He was available on the first wave of the Empire Strikes Back cards on the 31 back. 2-1-B, another medical droid. He makes several appearances in the Star Wars universe, including fixing up Luke's hand after it gets sliced off by Vader. There's a weird variant with the 2-1-B that has an extra bolt on his left hand. He first came on the Wave 3 Empire Strikes Back cards on the 41 backs. R2-D2 with sensor scope. We see R2 using his sensor scope on Hoth as he's trying to find Luke, and Kenner thought it would make a great feature. So we got this droid on the Wave 4 Empire figures on the 45 back. C-3PO with removable limbs. This figure had a ton of playability and was the first figure released on card to have an accessory that warranted another figure to use. The other accessory was the backpack for Yoda, but it was sold in a kit. It first made its appearance on the way four of the 45 card backs. Zuckus, AKA Forlom. Kenner mixed up the name on the toys and called this one Zuckus instead of the correct name, Forlom. He was portrayed by actor Chris Parsons in The Empire Strikes Back. The toy's first appearance was on wave five of the 47 card back in Empire Strikes Back. 88. The Wikipedia got updated this week as his old fate was that this torture droid got dismantled after Jabba's death. 
But if you look at it today, it states how he now works for Boba Fett. It's a miracle, he's alive. He was first available on the Wave 2 77 back Return of the Jedi cards. EV-99, one of the meanest droids in the galaxy. She ran Jabba's dungeon and along with 88, tortured and dismantled many droids at Jabba's command. EV was first available on the Power of the Force cards on the 92 backs. R2-D2 with his pop-up lightsaber. Here is how the normal lightsabers look. And here is how R2's looks. It's like a billy club saber. I like that. This droid was first available on the Power of the Force cards on the 92 back. The Probot. Why they don't call it a probe droid is officially beyond me. But the only way you could have gotten this droid was to buy the turret and probot playset from the Empire Strikes Back release of toys in 1980. So that's my complete list of the droids that Kenner had as toys. Was my list complete? Let me know if you got all of them and if there's any that I'm missing. <laughs> Let me know in the comments. But wait, there's more. And it's something that I didn't even know existed until I started this run. Now, there were a lot of things that were new to me before I started this collection run, and this next set was one of them. The Droids line of toys from 1985. Based on the Droids cartoon, The Adventures of R2-D2 and C-3PO, it aired on ABC from 1985 to 1986 before it was canceled, and the toy line featured 12 characters and three vehicles. But for being called Droids, it only featured toys from R2-D2 and C-3PO. The 13th figure was the Brazilian Glasslight release of Vlix, which is only available in Glasslight. And that figure is pretty rare and expensive to find these days. It's basically a holy grail for a lot of collectors. But since we had the R2-D2 version of the sensor scope in my childhood collection, let's go ahead and get the display version of my little buddy. And there's a mistake that I made, so I wanna show you that later. Now, the things to look out for for any R2-D2 figure that you buy is the sticker. Of course, you want one that's as wide as possible, but you also want one that has no sign of tears. And also, check to where the legs move close to the body. R2 figures often have leg rub along the sticker, and sellers love to hide that flaw on them. So if you can't see clearly when buying online, make sure to ask for that photo on both sides of the figure. And we found a great example of this figure selling on eBay for just under $40, so we picked that up. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you and let you guys know that early on in my run, I'm talking like the first week, we did buy this R2-D2 figure. And I used to buy sometimes figures that I wasn't too proud of. So we picked up this figure for around $20. And at the time, I thought that was a great deal. But as you can see, the condition of the sticker and the figure all around isn't too great. Then we recently picked up the already mentioned one. Now, let me know if you think I can get this one graded, and I'll think about sending it in, and then we can place the first one in our display. And here they are side by side. So, what do you guys think? Is it grade worthy, or should I just place the better one in the case and buy an already graded version of the R2 sensor scope? Let me know about that in the comments. So for now, let's place the not too good R2 in our case from Collector Displays. And let's also mark off this R2 for $21.37 from eBay. And we'll also mark the quote unquote grading R2 with a question mark. And we picked it up from eBay at a price of $39.14. So were those the droids that we're looking for? The grading version? Yeah, I think that could definitely be my display case. But is the better one worth a grade? That's something that I'm leaning towards no. And we can probably find a better R2 for grading, but right now, the one that isn't so great is in my display case, and that one is fine for a display, but like I said, if I can find one already graded, then we can sell the one that's inside that display case, and the one that's better, we can replace that one inside there. And as you collectors know, sometimes it's a game of upgrading. So thank you for going on that deep dive on the droids with me. Let me know if you got all the droids that I mentioned on your list and let me know if I missed some. So if you found this video interesting, please hit that like button. It does support the channel. And also join me on my social media pages. All the links are on my homepage of my YouTube. And there's also links in the description of this video for things that may help you along your collecting journey. Just hit the arrow next to the title on your mobile device or the show more text on a desktop to reveal all those links. And when you click and buy from those links, it does support the channel, so thank you for that. And also, if you want to see more Star Wars collecting content from me, 
please hit that subscribe button. And also hit that notification bell so you can know when videos go live. I post videos every Wednesday and Saturday. And as always, my friends, thank you, and I will see you next time. If you're new to the channel, check out the welcome video, or just check out the next episode. And please subscribe if you want to follow the journey. And remember, there is no shame in being a Padawan.